Welcome to Adventures in Grace. This is Jim Hockaday. I'm looking forward to getting into our second part on believing. And before we do, of course, let's go right to our three reasons why we do these videos. Number one is so that God can become more real to you, that he becomes more tangible. Amen. It was never meant or in the mind of God that we were to have a relationship with an idea, but an actual person. Thank God for that. In other words, when I got married, I didn't get married to a love letter. I mean, love letters are nice and thoughts are nice and words are nice. But then the person behind all of that is who you actually interact with. Number two, in the realness of God, it's easier for your prayers to be answered. Really, when you look at faith, it's nothing more than a response to the person that you believe. How much more as we get into this second part on believing that you're going to see that? And then number three, that you can take your testimonies and share those with others. So before we begin, we'll start right away again at Matthew 11, 27 to 30 in the Message Bible. That is, in a sense, the scriptural passage for all these videos that we're doing and it's an invitation from Jesus himself to your heart personally that you might have the exact same type of relationship that Jesus has with the Father, you would have it also. And so this is what it says. Now Jesus resumed talking to the people, but now tenderly. The Father has given me all these things to do and say. This is a unique father and son operation coming out of father and son intimacies and knowledge. No one knows the Son like the Father, nor the Father like the Son. But I'm not keeping these to myself. I'm ready to go over it line by line with anyone willing to listen. Are you tired, worn out, burned out on religion? Come to me. Get away with me and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me. Work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting upon you. Keep company with me and you'll learn how to live freely and lightly. Just take that to heart. In fact, uh, soon here, we'll go ahead and just take that whole passage and just use that as an adventures in grace just to talk about even those verses, Matthew eleven twenty-seven 27 to 30. But let's get into our second part on believing. And as you know, I shared with you the instance that I had, which was really a grace story, uh, years ago where I was studying and, and put into my computer the word believe. And I typed it in, you know, and I know how to type. And, and I pushed enter. And what came up on my Bible program instead of believe it was, uh, excuse me, I typed in fasting, and what came up was believe in the Vines Expository Dictionary. Well, I quickly, you know, clicked out of it and thought, well, I wonder what happened there. So I typed back in fasting, and what came back again the second time was believe. Like, I know I'm not typing this wrong, but what's happening to my Bible program so I clicked out of it again, and this time it was like F-A-S-T-I-N-G, pushed enter, believe came up. So maybe I'm not as smart as everybody or as quick as everybody, but I finally said, okay, Lord, I, I get the point. You're messing with my computer so that I might understand something about believe. Well, let's read it and find out. So I'm going to read to you exactly what I read those years ago. That was a perfect timing for what God was beginning to share and give me that will just work right into the next couple of uh, uh, adventures in grace on this particular subject matter. So it says, even more often, this is the vines, even more often this stems or connotes a psychological or mental certainty as in Job 29, 24, which says, if I laughed at them, they believed it not. Considering something to be trustworthy is an act of full trusting or believing. This is the emphasis in the first biblical occurrence. And this is where it goes into Genesis chapter 15, verse 6, with Abram and his belief in God. It says, and Abram believed in the Lord, and he accounted it to him for righteousness. So I want you to pay attention to how it actually comes out in the literal language and meaning of the word believe. It says, the meaning here is that Abram was full of a trust and confidence in God and that he did not fear him. 
Well, I know that sounds like the normal way we would talk, but I've got to put this in perspective with the rest of what Vines is going to share. In other words, he had a complete and final trust in God, and he did not fear him. In other words, there was harmony between him and God. You can see where I'm emphasizing this. We're going to come back around to tell you why. And this is what it says. Um, it was not primarily in God's words that he believed, but in God himself. Now that statement right there is powerful. It wasn't primarily in the words that God spoke to him that believed. He believed in God. In other words, he had an encounter with God. What God spoke was secondary to who God was. What God spoke was secondary to the experience of God himself. What captivated Abram, who would become Abraham, this is the covenant that God was revealing to him, that you're going to have a son and you're going to inherit a very large uh, area, and your son shall be, you shall be the father of many nations, through your son shall be a great lineage, and the Christ shall come through this lineage. Okay. All that was said, and it was, it was placed in a covenant. But it was the experience of God himself that captivated Abram to be able to rely upon what God himself said. I'm going to say that again. It was the experience that God had, excuse me, that Abram had with God that captivated his heart that endeared him to God, which made what God said become relevant or trustworthy. Okay, you say, why are we making such a point here? Well, because if your salvation is not in the person of God, the Father, Son, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, your guide and helper right here on the earth, who abides and lives within you, if your salvation is not in the per person, but your salvation is in the meaning of salvation, that you were supposed to say something and believe in your heart that God would save you, in a sense, what I'm going to say is you put the cart before the horse. The primary part of what makes what's secondary real is the realness of God himself. All right, we'll go on reading here. It says, nor does the text tell us that Abram believed God so as to accept what he said as true and trustworthy. I mean, are you hearing this? This is, this is just like really good and deep and meaty, and yet still simple enough to understand, Abram wasn't trying to believe in God. Let's read it again. Nor does the text tell us that Abram believed God so as to accept what God said. He wasn't trying to believe God so that he could then have the benefit or the blessing. I'm trying to believe God because I really want the blessing. I'm trying to believe God because I really need my healing. I'm trying to be believe God because I'm in a pickle and I need financial blessing. Then again, we, uh, we value the blessing beyond the person. Okay, it's like the kids that go into the candy store and they really value the candy more than the candy store owner. Who says, kids, would you like to sit down and talk for a little bit? And they think, um, no, I have my candy and we're going to go and eat it alone. <laughs> Hello, think, think of how many people are believing God to get their healing. You say, well, what's wrong with that? <laughs> You've got the cart before the horse. The relationship with God and your belief in him is to be endeared to you primary. 
This is under Old Covenant. You see I'm struggling a little bit only because we've so messed things up. <sighs> under Old Covenant, man, they had to believe in order to receive something. So you see what we have going here. And this is powerful because it works under the New Covenant. But there's an element in the New Covenant that's even more awesome. And Jesus was giving us this particular perspective. Matthew 6, the end of the chapter. Jesus said, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. Well, when will they be added? Well, in the new covenant, your salvation includes all the things that you would actually need. And in that passage, you see him talking about food and talking about clothing. In other words, the things of the world that are necessary for you that were much more necessary on the other side of the Garden of Eden than they were in the Garden of Eden because God was providing all those things in the garden. And Jesus is saying, you know, we've come through this whole period of time where men are trying to have things and they have to go through God in order to get them, which again is the, the cart before the horse. But Abram right here believed in God, not to try to believe in what he said, not so as to receive the benefit, but he believed in him. In other words, God made an impression that caused Abraham to believe God. What would come next was secondary. We place the benefit as primary. And in the new covenant, the benefit is already included in your salvation. In other words, on this side of the covenant, the only thing that we really need to put our faith in is just increasing in our tangibility and realness of our relationship with God. The wow factor that says God is amazing. I'm experiencing him more each day. He's so real to me. I'm really becoming very fine-tuned to his voice. Just like Romans 6, 10 tells us in the message, it says, now that sin is a, is, speaks a dead language and means nothing to you, God speaks your mother tongue and you hang on every word. What does that show you? Man, as you increase in your relationship, you're increasing in what? The tangibility of how you and God work together. Notice when Jesus was saying, I'm not keeping this relationship, this father and son intimacy and knowledge. I'm not keeping this to myself, but I'm ready to go over it line by line with anyone willing to listen. And the first thing they did is say, are you tired, worn out, burned out on religion? Because religion has stripped us, has turned things around and put the cart before the horse so that we try to go after the things or the benefits at the expense of having the actual relationship with God. Religion has taken the tangibility of God away from the church. Oh, I know there's individuals that'll say things like, oh, you know, um, you know, you shouldn't, you shouldn't try to have some feeling or tangibleness of God. You know, you'll get off if you do that. Well, hello. What happens when your spirit comes alive? Then your spirit is fine-tuned in its perfection, something that you can't do, but God did for you, so that you can actually hear him, feel him, see him, smell him, taste of him, experience God. I mean, what happens when you're born into the earth as a child and all your senses work? Those senses begin to detect the things of this earth. And all of a sudden, you'll begin to learn how to talk and you'll begin to learn how to see and you'll see more as you get older than you see as you're younger because your, your perspective begins to change and you begin to be able to take in more uh, of an increase of your surroundings than you do when you're just little. When you say, oh, honey, did you see that deer? Oh, no, Daddy, where was it? Well, it was right in the line of sight of where you were looking. Oh, I missed it. See, when you're older, you begin to take in more. Did you feel that? No, I didn't feel that. Well, see, as you get older, you almost feel everything. Did you hear that? No, I didn't hear that. See, you begin to fine-tune your ears as you develop, as you grow. 
as an individual. And all of a sudden your hearing, your sight, your feeling, your taste, and your smell becomes very alive to you. And you begin to recognize things through all these sensory perceptions. They go into your brain. Then your brain begins to log these things as the past and now what you're experiencing in the, in, in the, in the present and what you're supposed to experience in the future. And if we live totally out of those physical senses, you bypass the miraculous because all things are possible to him that believes. We're talking about believing. But what happens to the believer when he's saved? The moment you're saved, you are made brand new. You come alive. John chapter 14, verse 21. You come alive. Well, what do you mean you come alive? Your spirit comes alive. So all your spiritual senses are now alive to the spiritual world and connected to your Father God. That's why usually when someone's born again, if they don't get a lot of religion at first, they'll actually experience God like all the time. If they get taught all kinds of doctrine and theology from the moment they get born again, pretty much they'll just get stuck in that doctrine and theology. And then the part of them that touches God will be dismissed. Wow, 16 minutes already have gone by and I haven't even done hardly anything but kind of recount a little bit of what we were doing before. Oh, Lord have mercy. Listen to this wonderful story here. And uh, it says, we've been waiting to write this testimony to you since October of last year, uh, uh, but wanted to wait for the doctor's confirmation of a miracle we've experienced. Last October, I was about 12 weeks pregnant with our first baby. We went to the regular first trimester checkup when the doctor found a concerning thick uh, nocule fold on the baby. The doctor was very concerned and sent us to get more tests. A specialized doctor told us that the probability of our child having a genetic uh, dysfunction like Down syndrome was over 90% and recommended an abortion. She also told us that if we didn't get an abortion, nature would possibly take care of the problem itself and I would have a miscarriage or the child would have many abnormalities and in need of a lot of medical care. At first, we were absolutely devastated by the news. Thankfully, thankfully my father, uh, Fred Winkler, who I know uh, that's in Germany, what an amazing guy he is. Uh, when I did the radio show with BJ, The Abiding Presence, he would often be on that show with us. And it said, helped us to see truth and reality and recommended watching all of your video material on YouTube. That's where we heard of the testimony of the boy being healed of Down syndrome and also your daughter's testimonies of not going to the doctors at all during her pregnancies and simply trusting the Lord that he would create a healthy child. We listened to a lot of the material online and read your books and understand that faith is simple and we don't need to labor for it, but can simply receive all that he has for us. We went to the Lord and turned our focus on his realities and truth. We heard him say that the child would be born healthy. That's when we felt we should, at this point, no longer see these doctors and simply trust the Lord, that his word is true, that children are a blessing of the Lord, and every good and perfect gift comes from him, that the fruit of our womb is blessed. Normally, a pregnant woman would see a doctor every two to four weeks in Germany, and deciding not to go anymore was very unusual. But we felt that we needed to only listen to what the Lord was saying about our situation and trust him. When we got closer to the due date, I felt that it would be okay for us to see the doctors be prepared for the birth. During all the appointments, I would listen uh, to the show Adventures in Grace and remain in perfect peace the whole time. A little over one week ago, I finally gave birth to a beautiful, healthy firstborn, uh, Nuria Joy. After the delivery, a, ped a pediatrician checked her and I asked her for a test for a generic dysfunction. She looked at me in disbelief and said, you have a perfectly healthy child. We are overjoyed at what the Lord has done. Thank you so much for your ministry, for helping us to understand how simple it is. It helped us so much during these times that we could have that could have been difficult. Instead, we could, we could enjoy a supernatural, easy pregnancy. Wow, this is pretty cool. And just to let you know, they sent us a picture of this little baby. And I'm telling you, talk about perfect baby. It is just the most beautiful little child. So we rejoice so much with them. And that is a wonderful testimony. I've gone to almost 19 minutes. Listen, everybody, go to the YouTube channel, Adventures in Grace, uh, and, and, and look there. Uh, and, and send people there, subscribe. I, I'm not trying to make money off this. We've probably got about, oh, 500 people that listen on a regular basis. I just want people to get this information. It's producing results. 
You can also go to Jim Hockett and Ministry Facebook page and follow us. But for sure, what you just heard right there, go to jhmi at jimhockaday.com. It is our email that you'll find on our website. And send us in your grace stories. Until then, God bless you all. We'll see you next time.